we are back in Rhino and I'll show you a different way of making a shelf and also we'll start learning Modo for rendering so to duplicate multiple times there is a command called array so make sure you're in the perspective view type array X we don't need anything so 1 means nothing Y we need nothing and Z is up so we'll go 8 on Z then we can type the spacing or click and drag up to interactively do the spacing. It shows us a preview. If we are not happy with this, we can um, change. So I can go 7 instead. And I could change the, paci the spacing, maybe 6. Enter. And now it's done. So then we can click here, go 90 and uh, bring it down and to the left let me show you also a new co a new command um, if I want to mirror this I don't know if this uh, cube is really mirror but I could go MI mirror and I could select halfway mid and hold shift to be orthogonal you see like this or I can just drag but I think with shift it'll be easier just have to be slowly, to go slowly. Voila. Um, we can also press Ctrl Shift E. To uh, Ctrl Shift E will bring everything to the to the front. So as you know, we can uh, just make a quick cutout. Uh, I can go here, and I can do Boolean difference. Uh, subtract from those two with all of those. I'm going fast because we've seen this in the previous video. Uh, so now we have the cutout on those two. And that should be enough for the for the rendering. So what we can do now it's for rendering we need things to be polygon to be made of mesh. So we select all of the solid and we type mesh. You have to do this. I don't know why it's typing. Oh, because I'm in French. Voila. Mesh. And this is okay for cube. If he was a little if you wanted more detail, we could go higher. Now the solids are selected, so you can go delete. And now we can tell we have triangle. All of the mesh are there. Now in Modo, uh, it can only open Rhino 5 for now, so don't save as Rhino 6, make sure it's Rhino 5, and we could call this Shelf. Like this, save, then we switch, so once again the people who make Rhino is this, it's called Foundry, uh, to, who make Modo, sorry, they have a one year uh, student version or a 30 days trial you see here so when you start Modo you should get something like this uh, to make your life easier there's three things that I change usually with beginner if you're using the Modo of someone else you can go system reset preferences that would give you a brand new factory installed Modo uh, the first thing I do I switch to model because most videos in Modo are made in that mode. I unclick only here to see all of the tab. This one makes every object shaded, so I always make sure it's on. And look, if I use the orbit here, the floor tilt. It's, uh, let me show you, it's great for modeling, but it's not good for lighting or anima animation. It's something you only do it once, but I would like you to turn it off. So you go here, track ball to no. So once again, the little gear here, track ball to no. And uh, Modo would remember it. So now if I go uh, orbit here, you see the horizon is clean. One last thing that I like to do, if especially if you work with large file, I go system preferences and I turn off the autosave. I disable it. 
otherwise it'll save every 15 minutes. Now we are ready to start. So Modo is here. Um, to zoom you can use this or orbit. This is the pan. Now it's better to use hotkey. So Alt, you press Alt on the keyboard and that's your orbit. Pan would be Alt Shift. You're just using your regular left click. And uh, this is the zoom. Now for the zoom you can use the scroll. And uh, so to bring our first object, we can we could get it here, but I would rather do it here. We can go right click primitive. And that's how we can bring object cube. And we're going to mostly bring things from Rhino. But just so you know, here I can see I have a one meter cube. That's the size. And when you have uh, this little icon, it's like a layer. Look, we can hide it or unhide. So this can be called a layer an object, an item, a mesh. It's kind of the same thing. And we can have multiple in one. Uh, so I could have multiple cube in one layer. If you click once, you can rename this uh, cube. And here you can go delete. Uh, I could even delete this one. So to bring a Rhino or SolidWorks file, it's very easy. You go File Open and you look for your file it should be a 3dm and i call it uh, shelf open now what's going to happen often it's going to be very tiny first of all i did not measure it in rhino uh, so we can see it's really really small and we can in modo if you want to bring everything to screen you can press a or shift a so if you select one shift it but we can tell two mil it's like a jewelry. It's very tiny. And also one bad thing that Modo does, it brings every item inside a group. A group is like a folder. So we can go shift and we can right click and go uh, to unparent it. One way of doing it is like this. And you unparent to here. So I'm going to undo Control Z. Uh, let's first close this modo because I didn't use this one. This scene. Voila. There's a faster way, especially when you have a large scene. You can right click here and go uh, select. I forgot how I used to do it. Um, select, select item in hierarchy. So we'd select all of them and right click parent and parent. Voila. So now it's very easy to just shift click here, press delete to delete all of them. If I know that those two are going to be together, um, we could uh, right click and go merge. Sometimes it's easier. Or we could group things. Let's say uh, those one, I could call Control G and that will put them in a group. To move an object in Modo, it's W, and you can move. So you see, I'm here I'm moving the group, or you can press here. E is rotate, and do Control Z, and R is this one is the scale. Q is to drop or escape. Q will drop whatever is active. So here we know it's way too small, so I can select all of those. And uh, I could type here. If I click once, I could say 10,000%. So that would really make them bigger. And I forgot undo to select this one. So click once to have all of them. And 10, 1, 2, 3. So they are bigger. Another way actually of scaling them, let me undo. If you really want to have measure, so Shift A is to go snap and precision, absolute scaling, and if you kind of think this is kind of one, two meter, you can say I want my longest axis to be 1.5. M is meter, mm is millimeter, and you go uniform scale. So now they are to scale. It's just another way of doing it. 
uh, we could name things I could call that uh, click once and call that uh, board you know uh, side sideboard we could do this and then uh, escape if this is on and now what I want to teach you is how to bring a floor so we can uh, we don't want to be in this mode we can have shadows so we go right click primitive plane R to scale W to move and move it somewhere here voila Q and uh, to render you press F8 to see a preview you click here this is a camera this is a perspective so you have to go render camera voila and now you can uh, start doing your lighting so first of all I think the floor will be nicer if it's more on the back and maybe way larger so I press R voila so now we're getting the shadows so if we want the side to be let's say black you select them and you go M M like material and you have to give it a name so black BL and you can make them black here actually say OK and now we can see they are black so if we come closer what Modo actually has done when we did this and if we go into uh, this is called the item list and if we go under the shade tree it created a mask black this is for every object this is only for those two so let's do another one I'm shift clicking and I can go M call this one glass GL uh, I'll make it a different gray so we can see which one it is voila and here uh, we don't need to know all of it but uh, one thing very cool because I didn't do any fillet it's very sharp it doesn't look realistic on each material if you go down there's a rounded edge so if I go 5 mil mm we're gonna get a very nice you see highlight we could have gone even more like 8 mm and uh, here I can do the same with the black to know which material you can click here and it would highlight which one so we can do the same 6 mm on the black uh, click on the gray to go back to the glass and on the second tab you can say transparency to 95 percent so it's almost fully transparent and you can say refractive so that's the light bending through a, a medium like when you look at someone uh, swimming in a swimming pool and they look uh, wider that's what refraction is so let's say one four that will make our glass look much better um, we could even give the glass a hair of a color here but I'm gonna keep it simple um, yeah and that's actually good for I think it's enough for an introduction to model so once again you can forget the modeling part because you could model everything in Rhino um, here it makes it render faster here so my laptop is really slow but and when it's render you can click here on the gear IO and you can save this as a JPEG or TGA or BMP voila